Hello everyone, I now have a semi-finished guitar. I've got stain and about 13 thin coats of clear lacquer on it. You can see I've done a blend here at the heel and then again at the headstock so I can oil the shaft of the neck. And uh, yeah, I just need to get it leveled and buffed now, but stick around and I'll show you what I did. <laughs> So after getting the whole body sanded down to 320 grit, I taped off the area around the fretboard just to protect the binding and the tenon directly in front of the body just to stop the tenon getting covered in dye if any spilt over. And then I just sanded the very edge of the natural binding with 320 grit and that's just to roll that edge over slightly and that just helps prevent any uh, dye from spilling over down the sides. And then I wipe the whole lot down with a damp rag just to raise the grain slightly. And that just helps the dye soak into the soft grain. And then I stain the whole thing uh, pink using Angelus Rose leather dye. And then I knock that all back with a 340 grit Merca pad. Um, and I haven't sanded it all the way back, just just enough to reveal the figure because I want the pink to remain the dominant colour. I was fairly tempted to leave it pink at this point actually, but it might look cool with uh, just a black burst, so I might do that for a future build. So I mixed up my blue dye that I was going to use over the top, um, and on my tester it was just a bit too blue. Um, the dominant colour in the abalone inlays I've got is green, so I want to just add a tiny bit of green to the colour just to help play off of the inlays slightly better. So I mixed up a light blue leather dye and I mixed one part light blue to two parts neutral and then I just added a tiny dash of yellow just to help bring out the green. I didn't want to go too mad with the yellow because I'm spraying a, a cellulose lacquer so that's going to have a slight yellowing effect anyway. So hopefully the two together should just bring out a hint of green into the pinks. And I found this little spot just below the bridge studs next to the seam that for some reason wouldn't take stain. Um, and my initial thought was it might be some glue squeeze out from when I originally jointed the top, but I also found there's another little spot just next to the F hole and there are other, a few others that aren't quite as noticeable. And they weren't scratches or low spots because they normally tend to go a bit darker so I wondered if these were just particularly hard bits of wood that wouldn't take any stain. So given this is my guitar, I thought I'd try and do a bit of experimenting with uh, some tinted lacquer and I'll try a bit of drop filling later on. So anyway, I decided to carry on um, and I knocked back the blue again with the Merca pad. That's just to try and make sure it's not overbearing on the pinks and just to help bring out the figure a bit more. So then I got to work on the natural binding um, and how I do this is just to sand it back with, um, it needs to be some fairly coarse sandpaper to actually take the dust away otherwise the, um, the fine coloured dust just tends to get clogged up inside the end grain so I go over it with 120 and I put in a sort of a, a fairly noticeable facet all around the edge so that I've got a nice clean seam where there's no stain and then I come back with 240 and then 320 just to roll it over nicely uh, and then I repeat the same process on the F hole, it's just a little bit more fiddly. And once it was all stained, I drilled a hole for the earth wire and then I got the studs installed prior to actually spraying any finish on it. That way I don't have to worry about running the risk of damaging any finish when I'm installing the studs later. Then I taped off the headstock and the fretboard making sure that the tape was tight around the fret so that no lacquer could get underneath the tape onto the fretboard. And then I sprayed six coats of chestnut cellulose sealer. Cellulose so that it's compatible with the lacquer that I'm going to spray afterwards. And I just spray it out of a rattle can, um, that way I don't have to worry about using different finishes in my one spray gun that I've got. I can just reserve that for clear coat. The first coat I spray is a very light coat, just a mist coat. Um, and each coat I spray after that gradually gets slightly wetter than the previous one. And I just start off with very light coats just to make sure that the colour doesn't bleed over the edges anywhere. 
and I think you can see later on I did just get uh, a little bit of bleed around the F hole so I just came back and touched that up with a bit of sandpaper before spraying more coats and as I spray the coats you can gradually see the transition of the colour uh, the pinks are just sort of starting to get more vibrant you can see more of the figure and the blues are starting to become more of a darker green which is what I was hoping for and that's a lot closer to what it's going to look like once it's got clear coat on it so once I'd finished spraying the sealer I just used the Merca pad again to denib all the surfaces and it was ready for clear coat my spray gun's been sat in my dad's dusty garage I think since October so I'll give it a good thorough clean before attempting to use it uh, brushes and thinners and then I filled the tank up with thinners and sprayed some thinners to make sure there weren't any blockages and then I mixed around 50-50 lacquer to thinners and then I sprayed a few coats of lacquer So I got three coats down, really happy with how the booth performed, there's no massive plumes of overspray stopping me from being able to see the work. I think the only excuse for orange peel I've got now really is lack of technique. Um, one area where I wasn't particularly happy was the amount of open grain I could still see on the walnut. Um, I don't think I got the best results using the aqua coat, I think I potentially over sanded it too much, it may have helped if I sealed prior to applying the aqua coat or I may just not have applied enough coat so I came back with my walnut grain filler and applied a coat of that this is a, an oil based filler so it takes quite a long time to dry I had to leave it overnight um, but the beauty of already getting some coats of lacquer down I don't have to worry about it staining the maple anywhere and then once that had dried I sprayed another three coats
after six coats I decided to do a couple of little experiments. I found a couple of what looked like pinholes on the top and I just filled those with a couple of tiny drops of brown Starbond superglue. I used brown thinking that being made up of the three primary colours is probably going to blend in quite well on any kind of dark surface really. I also tried tinting a little bit of neat lacquer and I just filled in those little areas that I said wouldn't take any stain before um, and the tint in the lacquer did work really well however I don't know what possessed me to tint the lacquer with purple because I didn't use purple on the guitar anywhere um, and would have worked out much better if I'd used a light brown or a pink so I might come back and fix that one day. The other thing I did was to just put a tiny little bit of brown star bond around the area where the neck tenon joins the body. I talked in the last video about the glue up and how glue can get into the grain and I scrubbed all that out with a toothbrush however where I'd used the aqua coat and I talked about it potentially going milky if it's not sanded out properly well I struggled to get it out of the very area where it joins where the neck joins the body and that just left me with a little tiny white seam there so I just filled in with a tiny bit of brown star bond and that seems to have masked that really well With my experiments out of the way, I gave the whole guitar a bit of an interim level sand with 600 grit wet and dry, starting on the back because if I sand through anywhere, I'd rather it happens on the back and then I know how much of a risk I can take sanding on the top. If I sand through on the back, all I need to do is spray more lacquer, whereas if I sand through on the front, then I've got a whole load of work to do in trying to spot restain or sand it all off and restain and that could just be a misery. The other thing is I wanted to know how well I'd filled the grain with the walnut filler. Um, so level sanding that thoroughly, um, I was able to tell whether or not I needed to add another coat of filler or not. So once I got that all level, I did the same on the headstock. And I normally scribble my name on the back of my headstocks. I just use a, um, it's a deco color paint pen. Um, I've tried Sharpies and other ones I tend to find these sort of I don't know whether the paint dissolves them or they just don't look as vibrant after they've had a few coats of lacquer on them where it's the deco colour ones work really well um, and I normally stick the number and the year on the back of the headstock too but this time I stuck GGBO on there and then wrote the year and the number on the neck tenon and then it was ready for some more lacquer.